What is up YouTube, this is Valve here, back again today with you guys in a new speed duel deck profile video. Now have you guys seen the Fortress Whale speed duel match against one of the top tier decks in a conflict warrior speed duel match the other day? Here is the Fortress Whale deck profile uh, that I played and would like to feature and show you guys right here. So just in, keep in mind guys, once again, you know, this deck is more of a casual and fun deck purpose. Uh, I, again, in that speed duel match, I just really want to test the capabilities and the extent of what this deck can really do. And in my personal opinion, I, despite losing 0-2 uh, and two against an inner conflict warrior, we grinded and basically held our ground as much as we can uh, regardless. So anyways, I know you, many of you guys are definitely wanting a deck profile on this just for fan favorites for you guys out there as well as uh, Fortress World fans in general. So here it is for you guys. Anyways. As always, quick card sleeve review that we're going to be using today. We're using these OCG water attribute water sleeves, of course, because it's Fortress Well, it's the ocean, it's the water type. Makes total sense to use those sleeves. Anyways, with the skill moving on, we do play uh, Ritual Ceremony Emma skill right here, simply because it's just the fastest searcher that really helps uh, allow you to bring out Fortress Well as quickly as possible. It works very well with this deck, and basically you want to, once again, use this skill as often as you can, as soon as possible. There's ne never a time, never in a situation you would want to wait because you want to get those card advantage right off the bat. Anyways, for the boss monster, we are running triple Fortress Whale right here. Level 7 water tide, 2350 attack and 2100, uh, 2150 defense. Okay stats, uh, not the greatest for a level 7 uh, ritual monster. I think there might be better options out there if you're going to be playing ritual summoning uh, to begin with anyways. Uh, but yeah, if only it had a little bit of higher attack, I think it would be pretty okay. But anyways, you definitely need a 3 of because you're trying to summon as many as, as many of them as you can and as quickly as possible total makes sense and you want them to see them you want to see that card in your hand so you can use ritual ceremony anyways another new uh, not new but like another card to play as well as senju definitely uh, running triple of these guys uh, definitely uh, part a huge important core of the deck because you do want to search out your fortress well once again for the same idea as quickly as possible very common combo senju is equivalent to fortress whale immediately because you get that to your hand and then you get your ritual spell and you do have anything to use you, uh, to, to tribute for it then you immediately bring yourself a fortress well on the board and send you as well. Next I play two sonic birds now uh, some of you guys might play three originally but because of ritual ceremony and we do play uh, quite a lot of ritual spells that can bring out fortress well from now on we don't really need three sonic birds anymore so two is a very very good amount even sometimes in uh, certain decks you just need one uh, but it's still uh, vital because it's definitely it's the one that searches your um, ritual spells. Now for the very familiar engine that some of you guys may have seen before around the community but we are playing the triple red eyes black dragon and I will explain uh, later on when we're moving into spells why but you guys get the whole idea is that you know you want to use uh, red eyes black dragon as your tribute um, requirement to help you bring out force as well. Now why is that because there's a couple of cards that synergize with this very very well and I will show you there when we uh, move on to our spells so we are moving into our spells already uh, first and foremost triple advanced ritual art uh, this card came out in the speed duel match of a millennium and you know before this card came out I was kind of hesitant on making a fortress well deck I never felt that confident it was not that great it was okay you can bring it out often but like not as fast uh, with the addition of Advanced Ritual Art and it's just really really good because all you need to do is basically have Advanced Ritual Art and Fortress Well on your hand and immediately you can basically send Red Eyes Black Dragon from your deck to the graveyard to summon Fortress Well that way which is basically much 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 more much more preferable and much faster. Now the only downside is you never want to draw into your Red Eyes Black Dragons because if you draw into them uh, they essentially become a, sort of like a dead card in your hand and you know you really you rarely just normal summoning them it's not as worth it you really want to utilize off uh, advanced virtual arts but in a case when that ha does happen you know sometimes you do uh definitely want to play the original ritual spell which is which uh, fortress whale's oath so that you can just discard it off your hand to summon the fortress whale which really gives it this versatility which i really really like overall next uh, for our backward removal cards, one of my favorite backward removal cards uh, would definitely need Night Beams to basically stop all those annoying traps that your opponent may be potentially playing, for sure. Uh, next, I play one more uh, spell, sort of like a tech spell card right here. I rarely even get to see it in use, honestly, when I'm uh, if I'm reviewing back 
on all the duels that I've been playing with this deck, but it's still pretty neat because uh, you basically get to bring back your Fortress Well back from the graveyard for just the 800 life points of cost, which I think it's really, really nice. Some of you guys may not like this as a tech card and think it's rather slow and not as great. Uh, you guys can actually play a Offerings to the Doomed uh, in the main deck instead if you guys desire as well, but that's uh, my whole take on it on the uh, base main deck itself. So we're now moving into our traps. Uh, we're playing Double Dust Tornado. Once again, back with removal. We're also playing uh, double red eye spirit right here and that's basically why it synergizes so well with advanced ritual art and uh, red eyes black dragon so when you ritual summon uh, fortress whale you know you'll be sending your red eyes black dragon to the graveyard you know you'll be usually thinking okay what's next what's the what's the point of it can you get more out of it right you want to plan ahead and play even further and red eye spirit really allows you to do that to really help this deck thrive a bit better a much better into the mid game uh, this deck, just so you guys know, it's a very early game-centric deck because of Ritual Ceremony and all the fast searching right off the bat. It doesn't do as good um, in, in late games, although it grinded pretty hard uh, through um, the Speed Duel match uh, the other day. Uh, last but not least, we do play one more Trap card, Eliminating the League. We have so many spells uh, that we play in this deck, and mainly because we search so much that we necessarily don't need to use all these Ritual spells. Uh, when it comes to the mid game essentially basically and eliminating eliminating the league really really helps utilize those uh, dead ritual spells in your hands now the reason why it's i guess it doesn't sound good because it might be there might be useless uh, ritual spells in your hand at certain times but you really need them as soon as possible in order to help you bring out force as well uh, to keep the consistency and speed of the deck overall so that basically rounds up for the main deck right here there's uh just 24 cards in the main deck just so you guys know uh, once again, I do play more than 20 cards in this one because, you know, th there's a lot of searching, a lot of digging through your deck. You get your res you go through your re resources very, very quickly overall. So yeah, that's the main deck and we are going to move on to the side deck. Now for side deck, we do play double offerings to Doom. Some of you guys might want to main this instead because this card is just really, really good in the current meta. You know, pops a monster, but you don't get to draw. Uh, it doesn't work as well with this deck, I feel like, because this deck really needs that draw. Uh, especially when it comes to the mid game and late game you get your resources quick in the early game at the start of the beginning of the duel but once you start uh, depleting your resources or once your opponent starts uh, taking out of your resources offerings tend tends to backfire but it's still really essential because you can pop a monster your opponent just in case you really need for extra backward removal one more dust tornado i feel like uh, for DD Crow against any graveyard centric deck, so though we don't really see many of those in the current meta game, but you might sometimes see a rogue deck that might utilize the graveyard here and there. So I feel like it's always a nice safe card to sort of side uh, keep in the side deck regardless. Uh, next we do have play one Golden Ladybug, of course, to counter to any of the burn decks, so you're not losing as much. And then last but not least, uh, Jaw of Avarice. And I know I play a lot of Jaw of Avarice in most m most of my decks, uh, but I still really highly recommend it for this deck because it works even better. It really helps bring it out. Uh, basically help you bring that bring back um, from the mid game into into a late game and sort of uh, recycle your resources so that you can prolong your games a little bit longer to uh, if, if the game gets turns out to be grindy for example like the speed duel match that we played against the conflict warrior maybe if we had a jar of our rice we could have recruited a lot of our resources and then maybe even like out resource them uh, and then basically beat them from there as well and maybe sometimes i've been thinking maybe i should main this main deck this card, but a lot of people don't feel like it's not that great. I actually tried it, it's sometimes not that great. It turns out to be a pretty dead draw if you see into it. So it depends on the matchup overall. But yeah, that basically rounds the side deck right here. Six side deck cards as usual. And then last but not least, an extra deck just for the sake of um, just in case letting your opponent know that you might go into it. Same reason as always, uh, six any fusion monsters. It doesn't really matter. Waking the dragon doesn't seem to be that as prominent and as obvious as before anymore. So. Yeah, nobody really really plays that, but you just want to put that just in case you might want to give some pressure to your opponent. Depending on your locals as well, depending on your local tournament scene, depending on what people play, you might be needing that as well. So yeah, that basically rounds off the entire deck profile here, guys. Uh, please keep in mind, once again, this is my own build. Uh, you know, use my build to your own resource uh, as as like a base for you guys to build build upon your own. Uh, you know, if you guys have any other cards that you guys would like to suggest, be sure to comment down below. I really appreciate the advice and the help as well. Uh, but yeah, if you guys enjoyed it, be sure to hit that like button. Uh, comment down below what you guys think. Subscribe to the Vault channel for more awesome Yu-Gi-Oh! Speed Duel content as always. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. You guys have a great day.
great night wherever you are. See you in the next video. In this vault, signing out.